everybody, it's you. We have a mission to clear for Bloodcraft Prepare missions today. Defeat. So we're playing an unranked. Why are we playing an unranked? Because frankly, Bloodcraft isn't very good. We're playing the Bat Aggro deck. The advantage to it is that it's very fast. That works in a couple ways. Um, not only does it mean that we can catch people unaware and win some games that we otherwise might not if they stumble on early draws, but because the games are fast, we can jam them really quick and not worry too much about winning or losing. Just play, try to pick up our wins, and get out of here. I wouldn't play this on the ladder much if I was at you know anything above A0, because, like I said before, the deck isn't terribly good. It basically does the same sorts of things that Banner Sword does, but not as well. Banner Sword has more tricks, more ways to deliver damage out of hand, uh, more resilience, and is more forgiving if you put in cards that don't make any sense, just because of overall card quality. Uh, Alright, so we're playing against, I guess, a Shadow Path to Purgatory deck here. Uh, that's fine, because he doesn't seem to have any interest in contesting our board. So we're just going to rush him down. And that's really what most of these uh, blood aggro games are going to look like. We're going to try to rush somebody down, we're going to try to get in before they can execute their game plan. And if they manage to stall us long enough or take over the board in the late game, then we probably lose. That's just kind of how it works. Putting down these two little soul devils right now because now it'll be his turn to evolve, and if he does, we're going to punish him with two drains. And if he doesn't evolve, well, he's going to have to find another way to clear the board because we have lethal here without even evolving anything. See what he does. I really hope that the upcoming set gives blood some more ways to play. Like, I'd really like to see a mid range sort of blood deck that uses, like, oh, yeah. its really Everybody powerful can. removal spells, um, but has, like, Love has a game that doesn't just fold over and die to combos. And Looks like you which is what control winner. blood tends to do. It has a, like just amazing unfair spells, but it doesn't have a way to win before things like Seraph oh, or um, D Shift stuff like that. And aggro blood, or yeah, the aggro list with bats and so forth is okay. But like I said, other decks do the same sort of idea better. If they add in some more support for like a mid range kind of deck that uses those spells to sort of build a board advantage and stay in the game longer, but can finish somebody off with creatures before we get to the problems of getting wiped out by combos, I think that could be a real deal. But that's all speculation right now. Prepare for defeat. Anyway, that was one game this down. We need three more. Family. Sweet. First brand vampire, aka Ambling Wraiths, uh, four through six. What a disappointing card. I've actually got the ability on it off maybe twice. You almost never see it by the time you're actually in Vengeance. Most of these games you don't even get to Vengeance. You either win before that or you automatically know you're going to lose and so you just have. But yeah, see, we're going first, and on turn two, we've already gotten to 16 health, so that's sort of the idea of what this deck tries to do. You just hit hard, hit fast, and get in beneath their ability to stop you. Dragon, however, has lots of ways to do early damage to the board and interact with us, depending on what the deck is. Considering he's running Dragon Wings, I'm going to assume he's not running the face deck that has the kinds of things that that blow us up. He's playing some sort of weird control. So I have no idea what he's going to run. And this is pretty good. we got a flexible turn four. We have a bunch of different ways to spend this mana. And that gives us a way to spend our turn five mana entirely also. Mana efficiency is really important on an aggro deck. You want to curve out, you want to play as much of your turn as you possibly can, not let it go to waste. Continue to put threats out on the board, continue to fight, continue to do damage. Humpty Dumpty. That's a card I didn't think I'd see him again in a while. 
I think it's a good card. I mean, having a board wipe that you can drop on turn four or five, depending on which side you're on, is really important. I think we might see more of it in this new set, since it looks like there's lots of new ways to pressure face damage. I'm kind of frightened by it. And yeah, Little Soul Devil is meant to punish opposing evolves, but you can use it to get value out of your own, too. So like by doing that, instead of just doing 4 damage, we did 5 and gained a life, putting extra pressure on him. And now if he wants to evolve again, we're going to drain another life out of him. Now the right move for him to do here would be to evolve and hit Little Soul Devil. Because then I'm left with an awkward trade. Okay, but no, he didn't do it. That's lethal right there. Weakness the power. If he had crashed into Little Soul Devil instead, I would have to spend another card to kill his guy, and I wouldn't have the resources to do this. All right, it's another one down. I wouldn't be having it nearly this easy on the ranked ladder. I promise you. All too easy. People in unranked are generally playing decks they're not comfortable with, or decks that aren't finished, or just, you know, they're not playing as hard. And that works really well for blood aggro, because there's not a whole lot of room for, for depth of play and figuring out better lines in blood. You just sort of throw it out there and hope you get it right. I'm sure there are situations here where I'm going to make mistakes and like they could be played better, but Prepare for the most for part, the lines of play in this are this pretty straightforward. For my family. Wardrobe Raider is not a standard card in there. Um, I'm running a one of because it was replacing something I didn't have when I originally built the deck. Whatever it was, I'm sure I can replace it now, but that ought to show you just about how much esteem I hold this deck in. And it's not really worth the trouble of going and spending more resources on. However, I will say, if you're climbing the ranks, if you're still, you know, anywhere from be beginner through uh, B rank, this is a great deck. Because it gets your games quickly, it punishes people who don't know how to play, it punishes people who don't know what's in your deck, and that sort of stuff is very easy to find. Okay, so we have a lot of ways to keep this fortress going if he wants to dedicate himself to trying to wipe out our bats, and that's hilarious. These bats are going to be just, they're going to keep coming at him. Yep. See, he spent resources here to wipe the bats out. Now we're going to hit him with some more. I've literally never seen that card outside of Arena, and now I've seen like three of them today. It's me, Vania. Can't attack the Dragon Note, so we can't swing Vania into it. We can spend Razory Claw to kill it. And this turn, we're making a bat, and we're finally popping that fortress. Next turn, we're set up for a really big uh, Wind God if he hasn't done anything to wipe our board. I actually really love that combo. It's sweet. I would love to see a Dragon deck that uses that actually to like real effect. Weakness the power. It was probably better to uh, hit a bat here to get around another dragon wings, but this does get me more survivors of Humpty Dumpty if he runs that. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Be gone. Oh, and it's a gold one or an animated one. Neat. 
But yeah, see, now we've got we still got these three survivors here. And Dragon Wings is gonna leave only. My blood is spilled. There's yep. no one else. I'd rather right. lose. Oh All right, another one. All too easy. Swordcraft. I'm already gonna go out and say we're probably gonna Prepare lose this. Swordcraft you either runs die. mid range and beats the hell out of us, or it runs aggro and does what we do better. But we got a chance. Sometimes they stumble on their draws. Also, the fact that they're going first is bad for us if. Well, generally we wanna go first with blood aggro either way, but if they're banner sword, it works even worse for us. Yeah, that looks like Banner Sword. Should have traded there and didn't. Especially because now he can trade Trooper into this to kill my guy and still have two on board. Oh, he's not even doing that. That's greedy. That tells me he's definitely banner. If you play that greedy, you're playing banner. Banner sword and unranked especially is for people that are playing like I am. People who want to just get their wins and get a quest over with. And that's super greedy. You put out a banner and you don't even have like other stuff on the board. There's a chance we could. There's a chance we could do this because of that. Could have played summon Bloodkin there, but uh, then we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't have the space for Fortress to make another bow and then pop and hit him in the face. He would just sit there doing nothing. Now he's at five. I know some banner sword decks are playing Aurelia, even though it makes zero sense in banner. Like, nine out of ten games, it's going to be a bad card for him. But if he plays it here, we're fucked. What you got? Yep, we're fucked. Victory and prosperity are yours. This is uh this is the problem with Banner Sword. You can run these decks you or these cards for. that are like counter to how the how the deck actually plays. Show your true like Aurelia, power. which dilutes your ability to actually get uh, Royal Banner off of off of the cards that fetch it, like Maid Leader. All to put in a card that doesn't really do the, the kinds of things you need your deck to do. It's basically showing up against these rare scenarios like this one. So you're making your deck worse in nearly every game. All for the sake of winning a game like this. Depending on how much storm damage he has in hand, we win or lose on this next turn. Banner Sword usually does have a fair amount of storm though. So, who knows. Let's speed things up. Yep. The battlefield yep, we're dead. It won't be long now. Together, we're unstoppable. Oh, he has to think about it? He didn't even realize he had us. He's just playing out cards. That's the strength of Banner Sword. You can play cards in it that don't belong. You can not even realize you have lethal and get it anyway. It's basically why Blood Aggro is the worst deck. 
Not worst, just worse of the two. Completely fine for going all the way up through B rank, though. It punishes enough players and wins often enough that you can climb up through there. I wouldn't run it through A. Alright, another dragon. Prepare for defeat. Dragon has lots of tools that beat us up. Kinda of I'm kinda of skeptical about our chances, but we'll see. Shadow play really doesn't play nice with uh with Shadowverse for some reason. The bright flashes of light and stuff seem to mess it up. There's a case to be made that it'd be better to play another Ambling Wraith there, because if he has Fire Laser, he can just kill our guy and get value out of that. But I guess he didn't have it. He just played a vanilla 2 one to R, so well, let's race. We're playing Face Dragon, we're playing Face Dex 2. Although our mana's a little awkward, because we don't want to play Demonic Strike next turn, and Wardrobe Raider can't evolve. So... Who knows what we're going to do here. I guess we're going to play two out of our four mana. I've got you now. I guess it depends on if he can beat up our board here, because we're spending our mana kind of badly. Oh, Dragon Warrior, yeah. This game's probably lost right now. We don't even have a good way to spend Wardrobe Raider next turn. Over already? Nothing that we really particularly want to do oh, with it. I mean, we can clear the board with it, gain a couple life, but we're left with one mana short, and he's gonna gain a play orb when we kill this. You is soon like I said, right, lots of decks do the game plan that we're on, and they do it better. <laughs> but we have a big life advantage here. If he doesn't wipe out what we've got, then he's in trouble. There's the fire lizard. Wild hunts. My beauty, how class! I would have expected Siegfried. Not really wild hunts, huh? Well, the only thing we can do here is drop this, evolve it to kill the lizard, and punish him for any future evolves. I know he's going to want to play Forte next, so if he evolves that, we're going to drain life out of him. These There's the Forte. Ah, dang. Okay, well. We're in a pretty bad spot. He's got two evolve points. He's at overflow, so his cards are going to be better. But we got to keep pressing. We don't really have any other options. I mean, you're going to have to. You're going to have to evolve that if you want to actually stop what's coming. Yeah, you're just realizing that now. You could kill the two two, but then Wind God's going to get bigger, and it'll make anything else bigger if it survives again. Yeah, you figured it out. My true strength? This wind shall I hate losing the, uh, the full Forte players, the people that play Face Dragon, and run it with the Forte Nothing avatar and sleeves, because they're never like nearly as good as they think, but what are you going to do? I'm talking like Raynaud, I'm sounding saltier than I need to, so I'm going to stop doing that. Stand before me yeah, we lost this game. Like I said before, that's the good thing about blood. Um, you can lose games and just get back in and take on another one. Yeah, we lost this. It's done. To have lost. We only need one more game to finish our uh, quest. Man, that already 
it's embarrassing. I hope the new set is a little less embarrassing about the anime shit. Okay. Prepare for if this were on the ladder, I'd say they're aggro, Another but it's an unranked, so who knows Come what they're on. playing. Well, that's not the best, it's not the worst. Turns 1 and 3 are kind of awkward so far. Okay, well now we have turn 1. Now turn 3 is a little awkward. Turn 4 can be really powerful. Well, no, because we want our Vanias on turn 5 because we're going first. So who knows what we're going to do. Okay, I guess on turn 3 we have blood packed for more stuff. That's gonna trade into our wolf when it attacks. So we just wanna go to the face. Get in the value where we can. We're already at 15, so I'm holding on to Curse Brand Vampire. It might actually make it to the buff on Vengeance. Happens so rarely. Ugh, that's ugly. Ah, uh, hell. I'm just going to crash through. And I guess we're going to play Curse Brand just to develop the board. Because on turn 5, we could play Wind God for a bigger hit if we don't want to play Vania. Yeah, but yeah, that 1-4 is a real roadblock. So depending on our board state, we either play Double Vania and Evolve 1, or we play Wind God and Smash Face. He's got playful necromancer. He can evolve that, crash it into the one two, crash the ghost into the one one, and he's left with a five three, and we're left with an empty board. Be a pretty good play. Oh, foul tempest. Okay. My blood is spilled. He's gonna evolve it, wow. Alright, he must feel the pressure. Which is a little weird. I mean, we're not, like, We're not any higher on life total than he is. And he's ostensibly an aggro deck, like... It's me. Venya. It's me. Whatever. Venya. People make weird choices in unranked. We kill the guy, make a bat, ping him twice. It's a pretty good start. Although this is another board that Playful Necromancer could just destroy. Evolve it, hit the little Vania, drive the ghost into the other two cards. Now that's a conundrum. Because you want to pop the one with the death rattle to take out um, Vania and the bat, but if you evolve it, you can't take them all both out. Play? Might just crash into Vania to take out the bat, it's and then crash the mummy into the remaining Vania. You just think you be <laughs> oh no, it's going to the face. That's greedy. That's greedy because we can evolve it and get way more value out of it. Our Vania is better than his, like, now vanilla 2-2. Oh, we play it, we do it in that order so that the bat comes out and gets the, uh, the wind god benefit. And now he's in a rough spot, and we have a lot of damage in hand. I mean, we can't play it both next turn, but we have ways to make up for damage here. If you play Cerberus, he can't beat us. Because he can only take out uh, two of these cards. Alright, well, we win. 
He doesn't have a way to beat us now. And no matter which one he leaves, we have enough damage to make a deficit. I'll show you. I haven't let loose lately. Okay. This wind shall blow again. I mean, yeah, you're investing in a better board here, but you don't have you don't have time to leave this two one on the board. This game is over. You just think you beat me. Yep, there it goes. Accept your fate. You're mean. You're too strong. <laughs> a worthy performance. And there you go. There's our four wins on Bloodcraft. All too 